It's the Exit 52 podcast going live here on a Tuesday night, April 9th, about 9.31 p.m. here on the East Coast. My name is Jake Luke, and uh, I'm joined by Brian. I'm joined by Eric. I think Spenny is going to hop in here. Boys, um, have you heard the good news? He is risen. Um, Purdue? Well, yeah, that that certainly was good news for a lot of people. A lot of Zach Eady haters out there. A lot, lot of haters uh, uh, of Zach Eady. It was almost getting to a point where I was starting to root for them a little bit. And, you know, listen, he looked very good in that first. Uh, yeah, we're not doing that. Jackson Holiday <laughs> called up. I was like, North, how long is this going to go? <laughs> called up from the Norfolk, Norfolk, Norfolk Tides uh, and officially going to be joining the Baltimore Orioles, I presume, tomorrow in Boston and uh, making his big league debut. Uh, he's going to be a debutant tomorrow, and hopefully uh, this will be his last ever call up from AAA until uh, health or whatever might uh, might move him back down. Uh, performance related, we're not hoping for at all. But, uh, you know, earlier than probably a lot of us thought, I think certainly I was targeting or not targeting, but looking at end of April. I think that was my prediction for when they were going to make this move. But Holiday been absolutely crushing it in AAA, crushing the ball. That is, you know, glove looking as good as ever down there. Uh, against some of those schmohawks that they're playing against down there and uh, down in AAA. But uh, coming up to the big squad, I think uh, Michael Elias, you know, he he played his cards close to the vest. A lot of people complaining about service time manipulation. But, you know, maybe this was always the plan. Maybe his hand got forced here by the bottom of this batting order and uh, some of the uh, rough performances we've been seeing from them so far. But, uh, Brian, we'll start with you, man. Let's get wet. We dream, get reaction. <clears throat> we dream of days like this. Uh, let's get wet. I mean, we've just been rolling that forward since opening day, but um, we dream of days like this. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't keep the guy down. You couldn't do it. And I actually was, uh, I, I don't remember when I said it, but I said Friday, I said Friday was going to be the day, you know, they go through one little road stretch here and then bring everybody back into the ballpark, kind of reinvigorate them. Um, you know, you get that first opening day week and you get all the buzz and people in the door and then it's like, okay, we settled into baseball season. Bring them all back, Jackson Holiday. I mean, I guess bringing them up for a couple of games before they come back to Baltimore works just as well. And like you said, they they definitely need to. Um, I don't think there's any question that he should have been on this team since day one, um, with the way he hit the ball down at AAA. And honestly, a lot of other ways uh, those guys are fucking raking down there. It's pretty unreal. But um, yeah, it's exciting. Like, what happens to Tony Kemp? Somebody's somebody's going to be moving here. Um, is this the little, end of the Tony, Tony Kemp era? Kemp. Little Tony Kemp, you know, he hung on as long as he could. He had a nice you know, flash that glove out there today, but uh, yeah, just a, a non competitive player at the plate. Non competitive, non competitive at bats. It's just we knew what we were getting into there. So, uh, oh, it's been service time in the house. The service time manipulators, they're back at it again, boys. Can't believe Michael Elias, big Michael Elias with his evil plan, hanging out with Ron DeSantis has chosen to manipulate the service time of Jackson Holiday. <clears throat> Are you driving right now? Is this safe? <laughs> no, I'm the passenger of this vehicle. Did you You're all aware. Aware. You <laughs> <sound great. laughs> All right, well, Spenny is... Uh, Big Michael Elias. <laughs> He's just got nothing. He's got like three lines, three canned lines. He gets through the wall and he doesn't know. <laughs> Spenny has a uh, hijack. It's pretty much your here. soundboard. Yeah, kind of it, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it maybe gives me a little bit of a, uh, maybe a little taste of my own medicine there. It makes me realize what I, I do with that thing. But uh, Brian, how about we let you continue while Spenny? <laughs> Spenny. I mean, that's it. I'm just fired up to, to go back to the yard on Friday. I was going anyways, but um, man, pack the yard. It's going to be a what's special the, uh, what's What's first pitch time? 705. Oh, fuck yeah. I'll try to get in there. Yeah, exactly. It's like wrap up the Masters and head on over to the yard. Yeah, big time. That's going to be uh, right around that time. And yeah, what a week. What a what a tremendous week in sports. Mm. We have the National Championship, obviously, on Monday night, which we talked about. Masters kicking up, but uh, we are here to talk about Jackson Holiday. RDT, you are balls deep in a blog right now for BarstoolSports.com, but I'd be remiss if we didn't, uh, didn't get your thoughts. You finally get to let your grandmother out of the cage how does it feel she is free granny you are free enjoy your your living room again and all that stuff um i'm pumped i mean i'm i'm fucking i'm i'm i was about to get in the shower we had just talked about being like uh let's just do a pot on thursday let's just do a wrap-up one i legitimately was like a minute away from popping an edible and getting in the shower and being like mm. all right well, let's play some show 
But um, and it's funny. I was talking with um Jacob Calvin Meyer today, and I literally this was what time was this? Seven thirty-seven. I said it has to be soon, right? Like after the twelfth. And we were like, you know, if it's too soon after that, then it just reeks of service time, you know, manipulation and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I still think it has to be soon. And I just tag, I DM'd him. I go, what a f- bunch of fucking idiots we are. And he was like, we're so dumb. Like it was sitting there right under our nose. I mean, w- I, what a, just a fantastic day. Corbin Burns comes out and shoves. The bats come mm. alive. Um, everyone was hitting today. Tony Kemp had a nice play. Thanks for your service, Tony, probably, but we'll see you. Um, and it's interesting because I mean, Norfolk is playing like Jackson made a play tonight that the tides tweeted out. And then like 12 seconds later, they were go, by the way, like he may have still been on there, you know, on the field when they announced this. Um, It's like when a guy gets traded and like, he gets like pulled out of the game by the manager and he's like crying as he heads into the showers, except it's like the opposite. Yeah, we're on hug watch. I, I I can't wait to see the video that the Orioles are going to have. Um, again, I I don't know if it's going to be Kemp or Ramon. I would assume Kemp, the lefty for a lefty and second baseman, and you slot him in there tomorrow. Um, I'm just I, I'm fired up. I am uh, I'm I'm very very excited to see him in Boston. Again, I've already sent around texts for tickets on Friday now. Um, this, yeah, the sprinklers back. Jackson's back. Like. I mean, what is not to love? This is the best. Like, the, what what a day. Again, we we waited. And like Brian, you said it. He should have been up on opening day. He wasn't. I threw a fit. A lot of other people threw a fit. Um, Big Mike Elias doesn't know what he's doing. Um, all right. And here's what – Um. oh, here's Jeff Passan. For those wondering, yes, the Orioles are still eligible to receive a first-round draft pick via the prospect promotion incentive if Holiday wins uh, Rookie of the Year. So that we're back. 15 days of the regular season, I think was the, uh, the time frame there. So they, they kind of just squeezed it in there. Yeah. So we're back again, that, that damn Mike Elias, if only he knew what he was doing, man, him and Brandon Hyde are just two, I two mean, losers I, out there, I guess. Nobody loves uncle Mike more than me, but I, I do kind of feel like they're, I, I don't know if I'm going to be like dancing on the mountaintop, singing his praises on this one. I think he maybe placed a little bit of faith in Arias and uh, I, you probably couldn't have seen Austin Hayes coming out of the gate as poorly as he did this year, but I think his hand kind of was forced here. There was no other move to make. Like he, he was ready, you know, he was ready to be on the big league squad uh, from, from the jump here. And I don't know. I think it was reasonable to say, look, we've got these professional, you know, players here. They, they've, you know, had their their moments throughout their career and they can probably, you know, steer the ship for, you know, a, a certain amount of time, but just wasn't working, man. We talked about it in our series recaps. We're going to have a series recap of, uh, you know, the, the Red Sox when they're done playing up in Boston. But I, I don't know. Didn't expect this to be a part of the storyline, but here we go. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Spenny, how about we uh, we we jump you in here? Yeah, I. what do we say on the Jimmy's tailgoat stream? I think I said the live, or excuse me, the over under, for Tony Kemp's total plate appearances before Jackson was caught up at 20. Like we said, this, this is going to happen. They're going to call him up in a couple weeks and everyone's going to forget about all their, their woes and all the fighting and arguing that's gone on. And Jackson's going to be a, an absolute electric factor, man. I mean, look at, this is what blows my mind. I was looking at this earlier today. Just, oh boy. The fact that <laughs> he has so solidly been the, the top prospect. I'll, I'll cut off there. My, my audio is bad. I'll cut off. There you go. <laughs> no, your audio is a little, a little jumping in and out. Listen, we're just really we're we're building the plane as it gets in the air here with you uh, out there on six ninety five. Traffic, I'm sure, is amazing. After uh, my brother uh, upstairs asking if you're in a submarine, which really wouldn't shock me. Uh, with God knows what you got going on in your free time, but uh, yeah, no, I mean it. Just it, it was like like I was kind of belaboring the point. And I don't want to belabor it too much, but he was ready to go from day one. And you mentioned it at the tailgate. We talked about it. But I think we kind of, you know, we came to the front office's defense a little bit that it's <laughs> as he drops out, that it's reasonable that you would expect Hayes, Arias and uh, Mateo and all these guys and Kemp, you know, was the uh, the addition there to to hold down the fort. But yeah, it just wasn't uh, it wasn't tenable. And I think Jackson Holiday on his end of things, he held up his end of the bargain. He forced their hand. I'm not going to act like I'm following Norfolk's like stats and everything. I'm, I'm not like digging into uh, the box scores like some people are, uh, but it's unavoidable. He was just hitting bombs every single night, him and Mayo and Kerstad in particular, those guys are all pretty much ready to be on this roster. If not right now, then very soon. And I think Jackson had already proven that he was ready to be up here right now. I'm very excited. Going to snag my tickets for Friday night as well. And I did think that they were going to try to make a, make a big ceremony out of it and call it up or call him up kind of like they did with Adley 
you know, maybe they bungled that one a little bit with the Preakness and everything, but we don't have to get into that. But they were going to, you know, call him up, you know, ahead of a home series and let him kind of have his moment. But no, I mean, you know, this speaks to the seriousness of it, that they want to help this big league squad right now. And uh, this is the guy to do it. It's interesting. Who's pitching on Friday? Good question. I'm not sure. Eric, you're muted. Who's pitching for the for the Milwaukee Brewers? Deal Hall. To be no, right? Yeah. Dayton yeah. Lane. Dayton Lane Hall. Is he yeah. in the lineup? I mean, lefty on lefty. You don't, you don't call him up to not put him in that lineup, but it's. I mean, it's the fir- it's the first home game. Like the, I I know I just talked about how they they're not making this a PR thing, but like man, they, it, it's they, that would be. You gotta would, leverage it where you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't not do it. I mean, ticket sales are going to be through the roof. Attendance has, you know, been pretty solid, despite what uh, some bizarre Nationals account that I keep seeing is, you know, whatever propaganda they're trying to pursue. We don't have to get into that, but yeah, I don't know. This is just uh, it's time, and it's a it's a joyous time, and it's a a time to uh, say, "Hark, now hear this, Jackson Holiday, Baltimore Oriole," and um, yeah, like I say, it just it's a bizarre bizarre feeling, bizarre rollout to this whole thing. He should have been on the uh, should have been on the major major league squad from day one, Eric. I'm sure you agree. Still muted. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it, it, it should have been done. The fact that it wasn't okay, whatever. They're six and four. Um, I think six and four, right? Yeah. Six and four, 10 games. <laughs> again, we lost 10 games of, of not having Jackson. That's fine. R- Ramon Urias didn't lose the Orioles a game. Tony Kemp didn't lose the Orioles a game. Um, whatever. Again, it's like, all right, it's water to the bridge. You kind of forget about it and you move on because, again, there's zero reason to dwell on the past. If I never hear Tony Kemp's name brought up in an Orioles conversation, I'll be fine. Um, But again, it's like people are still going to be like, oh, well, remember when Mike did this? Who cares? It doesn't matter because, again, this is just another piece to the puzzle. This is another big fish getting added to the pond. Like he just makes this lineup just so much better now and and more athletic. Like the the, the whole – the raw – everything just is coming together with Jackson being added now. So this is – I'm I'm still just trying to take it all in and read everything. Um, he says Hall is pitching the game before they come to Baltimore. I I thought I saw that he was pitching Friday. I could be wrong. I've got probables so. with him in Baltimore. I, I thought so. Hall too. versus Tyler Wells. I'm not I'm not it's plugging Grayson the- pitching group. Thursday. That's okay. I knew Grayson was good. going Thursday, but um, I'm also kind of worried about the weather. But again, I'll worry about that when it comes. I just got my two tickets sent to me, so uh, Daddy likes. I will be in the building then. Um, yeah. I, again, I don't. Th- this should be. I'm, I'm excited to see him tomorrow. I'm, I'm excited to see what uniform he's going to wear. I think I had tweeted I thought he was going to wear one. Um, people wanted seven. People wanted 15. Um, I don't know. I, I'm pumped to add him to a lineup with with Gunner and Adley and Santander and Mountcastle and Kowser and Mullins and Hayes when he gets right and and all these guys in Westberg. And and this is, again, I mean, we, this is – we talked about it, Brian and I and Taylor and, and you guys, uh, Jake and Spenny – for the last two years or a year and a half or whatever. But we talked about this for years and years and years. Like there's going to be a time when this team is, is fully for, you know, coming into form. And that's this time now, like the power ranger, the big mega thing, the megazoid or whatever, that that's almost complete. Now we have all guys, this is almost it. So I I'm, I'm just pumped to see again, almost the final product and the team just keeps getting better and better and better. And again, after a performance like today, I don't know how, you could have been pumped up more, but that's it's a hundred percent possible. But um, this is huge. This is this is fantastic news. Couple that in with the draft, and and yeah, this is awesome. I'm very excited. As as is everyone. As a certain okay, I got a text that said, "Hey, I'm at dinner. Anything anything big just happened?" So people are pulling. We're we're laughing. We're having fun. Is that from a notable person? Why did why did you bring that up? Is this it's, already it's, a name it's, drop? It's, it's Jeff Arnold. I texted him and I was like, oh my God, this is happening. But yeah, we gotta get how about we yeah. we already got Benny uh dialing in from 695. How about we get uh Jeff from whatever tavern he's holed up in right now? No doubt two pints <laughs> deep, you know. I can imagine they're all doing at the uh, at the restaurant now. Yeah, they're uh they're probably uh, you know loving that dirty water down in the uh, the combat zone. Um but yeah, no, I mean it's interesting too, like with where the team was at. Uh, and a lot of people made the argument, and I agree with it. Like, man, you traded for Burns. Like, you're you're clearly trying to go all in to win the World Series. Why would you not feel your your best players uh, out there on the diamond every single day? And you know, like you said, it just became 
became pretty clear that that was not the case through this first 10 games. They started six and four. They really could have beat the Pirates in that game where uh, Gunner blew the throw to first. Uh, they probably should have. But ultimately, like it, it just it speaks to the fact that they are all in, that they're willing to admit their mistake and say, you know what, we're washing our hands of this whole thing and we're just going to bring Jackson up. And the exciting thing is he's not the only move to make. They still got Kerstad. They still got Mayo uh, as cards to play here. It's all uh, it's very exciting. And uh, just put in my request for uh, tickets uh, for Friday. So. Very excited. What's not to like? What's not to like? I mean, what a heck of a weekend this is going to be in Baltimore just to chill and watch the Masters and then just roll out to Camden Yards. I know it's not as easy for you, Jake, with uh, where you're at, but... Um, well, you know what? I'm actually right, you uh, can, right, uh, right by a light rail stop now, so I can walk to that and then uh, just, you know, take... Feel free to pop over for the afternoon. You know, I think I might do that, actually. I might, uh, yeah, I might pop one down. Yeah, maybe we can take in the final, uh, final couple... Uh, Holes of the competitors down at Augusta, and then head on over to uh. To oh, Kevin. the T man! Look at this guy, live from the Calcutta. This <laughs> 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 is great for an audio medium. You know? Um, yeah, I got some other things going on here. Um, how we doing? We're good. We're great. We were just talking about how great we we all feel. Thousand people in here watching with us. You know, uh, you know, just just up, all Taylor? hanging out. Taylor Smythe gracing us with his presence. How do we feel about Jackson Holiday as a Baltimore Oriole? Look, I mean, this is this is kind of the moment, right? Other than the Adley call up, this is the one everyone's waited for. Um, and I think in a weird start to the season where they maybe have underwhelmed for some people. I know RDT texts us every day with the people in his DMs and mentions that he gets annoyed by that are sort of really down on the team. I mean, this is the You're thing. oh yeah, sorry to cut you off, but your little to your little Tony Kemp tracker is no longer going to be in your DMs, Eric. I hate yeah. that. Congrats to you, Eric. <laughs> Taylor, oh, continue. Wow. Sorry. Damn. Um and so and so, you know, it's kind of all systems go. Um as much as it was before. I mean, we talked about this over the last few weeks like they kind of have all the pieces to to be a team that's getting predicted to win the World Series and part of the reason that they've gotten put in that position is Everyone assumed Jackson Holiday was going to break with the big league club to start and be a major contributor to this team and two weeks in, and here he is. So um, cannot wait to see it. Uh, he is obviously going to be a fan. He already is a fan. Fravor is going to become even more of one once he plays at Camden Yards. Um, and I guess whatever either – I'm interested – you guys may have already talked about this. I'm interested to know either whatever reps they thought he needed to get in Norfolk have been hit or they said, okay – we're done with this. Get up there, Jackson. I think it's the latter. I think they said, why are we, what are we waiting for here? This kid is clearly ready. Um, and so it makes you wonder why he just didn't break camp with the big league club, but whatever he's here. Here we go. Yeah. It falls within the PPI timeline too. Like we were talking about and you mentioned like, what, what were they doing? We weren't totally, you know, it's hard to tell, but I think the best read on it is they thought that they could, you know, do the service time manipulation or whatever. And those guys could kind of hold down the fort. Uh, and ultimately, it didn't bear fruit. But I'm kind of wondering now, like we saw the Adley call up a couple of years ago. Right. And that was with a fun team, but not a playoff team. And then last year, you know, uh, Eric Gunner comes up and obviously that was kind of a similar situation. This is kind of to me like. Would you guys be shocked? And like, I, I really sort of hate to put this out there, but is this the the Chris Bryant moment? Big, big shoes to step into. But I mean, this kind of this is kind of what that feels like for me. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, kind of. Um, again, I hope it's just that spark plug that really gets them going. Not not that they were going. Again, they lost two games in a row, and, and you know, everyone kind of thought the sky was falling, you know, eight games into the season. I just think there's going to be an out spark plug. I think it is going to provide that that kind of buzz that Chris Bryant gave. And um, I do remember after he struck out in his first at-bat, Chris Bryant, I tweeted bust, just like yeah. I think a lot of, of us course. did. Um, but uh, – Again, I think this is very similar to that. And and last year was kind of the 2015 Cubs season where it's like, oh, next year is going to be the year where where they really take off. And now, again, it absolutely should be. So uh, th this should be the year that uh, when he doesn't hit nine home runs his first at bat pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this should be the move that, that if, if you were – not that anyone was, but if you were like on the fence being like, I don't know about this team and what they can do this year. I think this is a move that should absolutely put you over the moon. And um, 
and, and just get you excited and get you out to the games more. And, and like you said, he's already a fan favorite. Um, I can't wait to see those paper mache jerseys on sale like eight, nine weeks whenever they, uh, whenever they uh, first arrive to the uh, ballpark. And um, also, I'm not sure where you can, but wherever you place your bets, I would probably try and bet a triple for his first hit to follow in the uh, the uh, line yeah. of great uh, of Orioles. Oh, yeah. 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 Manny and athlete. So, yep. Yeah. And so leaders, like you're, you're hitting well. on something there. Yeah. Yeah. Weeders too. You're hitting on something there too. And Alex Haney had it with the nine run home run in his first at bat. People getting annoyed. I would probably try to preach patience here a little bit because this kind of feels like the guys are opening, like people just getting frustrated and frustrated and frustrated with what was going on with the bottom of the lineup. He's presumably going to replace one of those hitters. Like, you know, it's probably not going to look perfect right out of the gate. Um, it hasn't with a lot of these big prospects. It took Adley a while to get going. I know Gunner homered in his first at bat, which was electric, but it, I think it took him a little bit you know, of time to get going as well. It's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period, I think, but ultimately like the guy's ready to go and, you know, like he was just in first period gym class the other day. So it, it will probably take a little bit of time. So let's not go too crazy and judge him too harshly or, you know, hold the expectations too high. Brian, I'm curious where you're at on that, because I know you're all in full steam ahead, just like we all are. But it's, you know, you, you got to manage expectations with these things, too. Yeah, I don't feel like managing expectations with this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> he's just he just raked at every step of the way. Um I don't know. Like, of course, it's it's the big leagues. It's everybody. Everybody has plus plus stuff that he's going to be facing. Um, As a former player, like, do you have any insight on what this kind of transition is going to look like? <laughs> um, baseball's a hard sport. It's a sport of failure. He's got to learn to deal with it. Um, I don't know, man. It's he's just raked level after level after level. Um, it's a reason why he's number one, bar none. By everybody, everybody that um, evaluates is just like this guy's going to be a superstar every which way. So, no, to answer your question bluntly, fuck expectations. Let's go out. Taylor Smith. I also what you to well, re expectations. Re real quick, is do you think there's any coincidence that the day that they announced that Lunchables have been found to contain dangerous amounts of lead? That they take Jackson Holiday basically out of school and say you're, it's time to get a job now. You can't. You don't have time for these lunchables anymore. Well, with everyone being so woke these days and you know n avoiding things that make you tougher, I think that probably would have made him a little bit tougher. And you know, this soft woke Gen Z generation, I think that would have been good for him. I don't know what you think about that, Taylor. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I want to touch too much on that subject here at this point. I, I would like to do a little more analysis of that question, Jake. You know, I, I want to avoid saying anything rash about that, um, you know, that type of societal discussion and that type of culture war based thing. But I appreciate you asking the question. That's why you're one of the best at what you do. You, you bring up the best stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Maybe bounce that to Thursday. When we were I don't playing. know. I don't know if you guys were watching live from the other night, but Randall was like, he went on this like tangent about like oh, and John Johnson Rock. Wagner was just like, you know, Wagner. I think I'm just not going to go down Brandon, that. Yeah. Have it all. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you, and, and Johnson Wagner was sitting in for uh, for Paul McKinley. I yeah, that's too, the so. perfect like he, Paul McKinley would have jumped all over that. Oh yeah, he, he's not showing the metal and the guile and the hearts that he needs over on the Live Golf Store. <laughs> <laughs> oh man god it's know, masters it's so week good. it's the best it's the, the, the have you guys watched been watching the live from the range this is way off topic but i just have to ask a that bit, is, yeah. you're just that is an amazing 90 minutes or whatever it is yeah it's nice i'm just gonna break guys down. Switch. in terms of managing expectations for jackson holiday i think i sit somewhere in the middle of banks and you jake i don't think i can be in a full manage expectations mode here because as Banks said, this guy has really, really raked at every level in like a prodigious way, um, which obviously justifies the number one, being the number one prospect in baseball. But I also think justifies people maybe not wanting to wait um, as much for a guy to produce at the major league level. He's also coming into a lineup where it, there is not going to be the same amount of pressure as what you would normally feel as a number one prospect, maybe going into a team that's not as complete. So he, I mean, it's not like he's going to get that focused on you would think um, in terms of as you're going through the lineup, trying to get guys out. Um, he's going to have to prove it to major league pitchers. Um, so I think he's going to get a little bit more to hit than the normal number one prospect who would come into a team that maybe doesn't just have the type of lineup depth that a team like the Orioles has right now. So 
Um, that should help him. I'm inter- interested to see where he gets placed by Bre- Brandon Hyde. Um, the other thing too, is we just watched him in spring training. I know it's spring training and I know you can't get that excited about spring training, but he just raked in spring training against a lot of major league pitching. Um, you know, people were going crazy about his home runs off of big league guys, um, uh, divisional opponents. So I, I don't know. I, I, I it's going to be hard to give him the normal, like, Hey, let's take a month to a month and a half to let the guy settle at the big league level. Yes. It is a totally different thing than what AAA is. There's a reason guys are in AAA and a reason guys are in the big league. So there's certainly going to be some struggles at some point, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to deal with like, Hey, through three weeks, Jackson's hitting 195. I mean, that I think would be like a, a huge disappointment. And um, I guess we're not going to yeah. get that type of like guy getting called up leeway that I think like even Kowser last year, I was like, well, I mean, Colton Kowser, he's a top prospect, but you know, it's going to take some time. I mean, this guy has shown it so much at every level that I don't know how the expectations couldn't be a little higher than normal. Um, and it's a different, a different spot that he's coming into as well. I think where maybe, and the more I think about it, maybe I'm a little less concerned because he's coming. It's almost like getting drafted at the end of the first round into like a really good NFL team and where you're like not, the expectations aren't as crazy for you. Whereas if you're the number one overall pick and every kind of expectation is on you, it's not a one-to-one comparison, but you know, Adley came up to that team in what was it? 21 or 22. And it just, it, you know, that, that was not a team that, really had a ton of talent going for it. And he was kind of, I, I wouldn't say he was relied upon for offensive production, but you're kind of standing out as like the one star studded guy. He was really the first of this new wave to, to kind of come up in a big way, save for, you know, you talk about Grayson and some of these other guys, but I mean, he was even, you know, up before that, before a lot of these people. And I don't know with Jackson, it's kind of like he's coming up and he is going to slot in. Like we've been talking about probably at the bottom of that order. And, you know, maybe not necessarily even going to be playing every day. I guess we'll see what they do with him. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, it's going to be a more comfortable environment, I guess is the way to put it. Eric, what do you think about that? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. <laughs> what do you, what are your, th- I hope that Eric's, Eric's too busy going at people in his DMs right now. To I, I am sure I just heard he just he 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 throw an alley used to him and he's staring at his phone. This blog. No, no, I haven't looked at any DMs, any DMs. <laughs> the little, the little Tony Kemp tracker. You better be going. not up yet. I just submit. Okay, there we go. So now we have your own divided attention. Welcome to the show. Yep, yep, you, um, you got me now. Oh, yeah, so, so I guess yeah, I guess where I kind of talked myself off the ledge, expectations wise, is he's coming into a team where there's a lot more talent around him, especially offensive talent. So he's not going to be looked at as like, oh my god, you're the savior in the same way that Adley was. Like he is, and it's a fun story, but it's not like okay, this is the start of this, and now we need this guy to start raking. It's not really a need thing. I mean, it kind of is if you look at their form in the last ten, uh, as far you know from the plate, but. You know, it, it's a it's a little bit different expectations wise. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, and like you said, when Adley came up, and you know, he's he's playing with Rugnet Odor, and and no offense, but you know, Trey, and and um, it's just I'm trying to even think of some of those other guys on the team. Like, no offense to anyone, it, it was not not a good roster. Um, and again, they you know they ended up turning it around, and then they 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 were good, but um, yeah, and, and then again, when Gunner comes up, he kind of came up at the end of the year, and kind of like just a little preview. This is like, hey, we're throwing you right into it. Um, you're surrounded by again all stars, former number one prospects, and uh, you guys had mentioned it, but it, it, you know, usually when a number one guy comes up, like you don't have all this protection. You're usually the guy. Here he's not. Yeah. Like there's plenty of other the guys. Like everybody on this team is a guy except for Tony. You Kemper can blend right in now. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and again, I mean, they could. I mean, Brandon could theoretically bat seventh, eighth. And, and again, like he, he's going to have protection around him. Like he's going to see pitches to hit, like they're not putting him first where it's like, all right, pitch around this guy, like Jackson, um, what's his name? Uh, Chirino or Chirino or whatever up in uh, Milwaukee, no offense to Milwaukee, but like Christian Yelich isn't what he used to be. Like there's not guys in that lineup where you're like, well, we have to stay away from them. Everyone in this lineup, again, you look at the names. I mean, you know, they, they, they can get really creative with this lineup and really have some fun with it. Um, I, I think they'll start them out lower in the order, like, like seventh, eighth, something like that. And maybe you put set at nine and put, you know, Mullins behind him. And I don't know, they, they could have some real fun with this and 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 make it a very strong lineup now. Again, everyone was talking about the seven, eight, nine being black holes. And and I think Jackson, he much like Corbin Burns makes the entire rotation and bullpen better, but just by physically existing and doing what he does, I think Jackson makes this a lot better because again, same thing he's just another added weapon. 
It's another guy that pitchers don't want to don't want to pitch against and and managers don't want to face. So it's yeah, it's it's um it's a great it's a great problem to have. And again, he's he's in a situation probably unlike any other number one prospect you know has ever been it's like it's almost like, like when tim duncan didn't tim duncan go to the spurs the year after they won the championship or like they won you know when they had robinson and all that and they still won the uh the draft lottery like he goes to a situation that is it's i mean it's a very very good situation it's much like caleb williams kind of in chicago like they have all those weapons around him maybe maybe jackson holidays is caleb williams no one's had a that um comparison before i mean speaking of gen z and a, a culture war surrounding a player. Brian, what are your thoughts on that? How about you expand on that for us? On that particular comment? Yeah, um, yeah. I'm excited to to get my, my fingernails painted and start crying in the bleachers. Okay. Hey, if, if Jackson paints his fingers, I'll paint my fingers. Doesn't matter. There it is. Any, how about choice of wardrobe? What if we're, you know, getting a little... Are we, are we talking petties? If Jackson gets well, petties, I'll get a petty. Ooh, how about that? Because I, you know, breaking, I don't want to talk out of turn here or break any news that shouldn't be broken, but there are two members of this chat that are big into the pedi the pedicure game and two that one of one of which is maybe curious but has not done it, and then the other one which is staunchly anti pedicure. Who's the one who's on the fence or curious? I wouldn't say I'm on the fence, but you know, I you know, maybe 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 I'll give it a shot. I just I I've never found myself in a I don't want to subject anyone else to my feet, I guess would be the way that I put that. That's honorable. That's but fair. You gotta do it. Okay. Cool. I, maybe we'll go together. I think you're coming up with excuses to not expand your horizons, is what it sounds like to me. You're trying to make yourself a hero. Just do it. Just do it, Jake. Just you are gonna Time feel out. better about your life. Okay. 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 You've you've sold me. All right. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go reality. Seven points to Taylor, and then we're gonna throw it over to Eric here. What, what's what do you got? <laughs> the rumor is that Friday's game is an Apple TV game. So it is. Yeah. I saw, I saw somebody yeah. comment it's that. It's on the Kim Yards. Then that's wild. That's it's funny how that works out. But yeah. That's what it looks like. Maybe, maybe they're uh, maybe they're in cahoots with Tim Apple, and they're trying to uh, they're trying to juice that Apple stock. What do you think about that? Could be, could be. Definitely. Nobody's. Could be. I can't wait to see Matt Holiday. Matt Holiday is going to be walking around getting chicken fingers on Friday at Kevin Yards. That's yeah, he's going to be. He's 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 an outsized presence. I I am excited to see. He's probably you know, maybe he will be there. I don't know, but I'm excited oh, to see. That, that's going to be a firm handshake. Be. Is he uh is okay so walk me through this is he like a helicopter guy cuz he's been he's been testing in some interviews recently and I know he's kind of in the mix and they've got that facility down there and everything with Ethan and all that going on what's what's Matt Holiday's deal these days He just he literally like I had people in Bowie who would like go to Bowie games and they would send me pictures on like a Wednesday night it was like 9:30 bottom of the eighth you know, like Matt Holiday sitting there like charting pitches in Bowie well, I had people. he's not like, overproductive like yelling like you know i think he just goes to the games and watches it's not like he's like screaming to you know your back your shoulders falling down or like you're dipping this or you're doing that i think he's just there to watch i mean it's like when I brian goes like sometimes with his uh his brian goes with his glove and his scorecard and he just kind of keeps the score and sits by himself and just sort of yeah, takes the, juggle, the rich I cathedral mean, of camden yards and you know the, the the history of the game it's it's a lot for him the foul ball guy is definitely going to be in the barn oh he's oh, going to be there that's a great call. He was in Pittsburgh. Yeah, that, made me, that made me legitimately right. wince. I did not think I was going to wince like that. And you said that, and I, <laughs> that was a, just a firm wince. Ugh. You remember last year when he uh, he posterized that guy on the flag court? That was one of my favorite right. videos of all time. That was unbelievable. I do I see that happen to an Orioles fan, but it, it warmed my heart to see the foul ball guy just, you know, still getting after it after all these years. Need to get him in Marlins, man, feuding again. Banks, that's your guy, Marlins, man. You got to get him. Yeah, on he home. is my guy. Get him in the house. Lawrence. Heck yeah, you should get him in the house. All right, um, I'll hit him up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll treat him to uh to the game. There you go. It's all coming together. Marlins man, Matt Holiday, foul ball guy, and all of us. What a, what a motley crew that's going to be at Camden Yards <laughs> on Friday. And Spenny's probably going to cut his trip short and come back and buy a Jackson Holiday jersey in the pro shop from Fanatics, and it's going to rip before he even leaves the stadium. Did we? Did anybody? Did we say Spenny's take? Was that texted before we got on, or you guys have already been on? So he uh, he hopped in. He was on six ninety five. It sounded like he was in a submarine uh, per my brother. You guys want me to read his tweet, his text that he sent us, or have we done that already? 
Uh, go for it. I don't think he we said, have. Just want this on the record. We've seen how absolutely electric Ellie De La Cruz has been. I just want to note he then takes a paragraph down. Jackson has been solidly considered a better prospect every step of the way. He's going to add pure electricity to this team. He very well, very well may le- be leaps and bounds better in terms of talent than Gunner or Adley. And then he just puts ye at the end. So he's excited. Just wanted to get his take in there. Him, him giving his endorsement of a player over Gunner. I mean, that's like, I mean, you know, not to make this a fully biblical podcast, but that's like, you know, denying the the big man JC three times for Spenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where do I like? That's the thing. That's why I think it's hard when we went back back to the expectation game. It's hard when you read something like that, which is such a nicely laid out point by Spen, to not think like, oh my god, like what could the first three weeks of this guy look like? Yeah. Um, based on like, that's why I'm like, normally I would, pre- as I said, I would preach like, Hey, like, you know, calm down. But it's like, man, like he, I mean, he's a, he's a, he is progressed better at every level than Adley did. And think about how excited we were about Adley. Mm-hmm. That's what's crazy about it. I mean, we were talking about, I mean, not, maybe not in a hundred percent serious way, but like relatively serious way about him being on the major league roster for the playoffs last year. Like, and I probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have been too angry at that. Yeah. There was a legit chance. And and again, now he's going to be 20 years old on the, uh, what are his rookie league league odds right now? Um, gotta be the favorite, right? Pro- I mean, again, it's still like, I saw somebody earlier, and again, earlier this for the news, but they were like, they were like, oh, this kind of sucks that Jackson won't be up because they're going to cost him the rookie of the year. And again, this was an hour ago. And I was like, I don't think like him missing three weeks is not going to like, you know, it's not like he's not going to win. He's not going to be able to win the rookie of the year. Now, again, it's like he has. I mean, Gunner Gunner came up later than him and he won it, right? Or I guess, no, he won it last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, He was last year. Um, Let me see. I'm trying to pull it up on an unnamed book. Um, Will Ty says that Kevin Carter was preseason favorite. Yeah. And I, I know Langford was up there. Right now, Jackson is plus 350. Wyatt Langford is 260. Evan Carter is 390. Colt Keith. And then it's it's those three. And then it's Colt Keith at seven, plus 1,700. And then Colton Kowser at 2,000. So, he, I mean, you know, it, it, all it's going to, because he's going to have the hype behind him. He's going to have the team support. You know, it, the, the Orioles are going to be in the news. They're going to be on the, t- they're going to be on TV. They're, they're going to be talked about. So now, I mean, he is. He's he, got the, he's uh, got the favorite. He's got the aesthetic too, you know. He's got the mop of blonde hair. Yeah. He's he's like mm-hmm. the next off the conveyor belt Orioles prospect with the long blonde hair, hitting bombs, you know, just you know, steal you know, stealing your girl, that kind of thing. So it's uh, it's you know, it's it's all coming up, Jackson. I think. And again, it's a great for the Orioles because they can still get that draft pick. Not that again, like I'm I'm really over the the like oh we have with this draft pick and we have to work on this. I'm done with the draft picks and all that. Like I'm focused on the World Series and and yeah and, yeah. And, I mean you can't yeah you can't, that can't even factor into the equation at this point. No, but it's also like it's just a nice little cherry on top, you know. RDT three points. We're going to Brian. Saw you raise your What's hair. What's that? RDT three three points? No, I was just doing a dap. Uh, I don't have like I don't have the. Not my guy the, Taylor. I'm. I don't have the uh, around the horn interface, so I, I'm verbally giving points out. I'm not. We've got, tra- something, we've got something going on in the group chat that I'm involved in here that me and Banks are sort of just signaling to each other back and forth on. It. <laughs> oh boy, the X Man's involved, my guy. The X Man, gotta have him. Love that. Okay, Woo! I love the X Man this week at Augusta. Love really, him. for a top ten? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> back door, uh, back door T two. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's going to give it a 54 hole leader. Um, <laughs> Fades upper. shoots a final round 75 to finish sixth. Yeah, yeah. no, he's going mean, <laughs> to, that, that water on 16, that's going to look like an ocean. Like he'll shoot, no, he'll shoot a 72, but it'll feature one birdie and one bogey. That's, that's yeah. some, uh, that's some rib vibes, Rory. <laughs> Just, you know, yeah. he's, he's four strokes ahead, and you know what? I'm just going to post a nice, comfy one under and I'm see just what gonna happens. Going to hang out here and just Somebody runs yeah. him down. Have a watch. Have yeah. a watch. Somebody, what are you somebody's already tweeted, and they said it's the. Uh, I think Taylor will get this more than anyone, but it's the Shawn Michaels kicking Ric Flair, that gif where he mouths, mm. "I'm sorry," and it said Jackson taking DL to Utah Street for his first career home run. <laughs> Pretty good. 
Not got to check. Like you're, you're doing the uh, the fish tube tweet here. Post WrestleMania, it's a perfect reference. Yeah, I heard it was a good one the other night. Tube. Huh? I heard it was a good one the other night. Fantastic! Oh, mwah. chef's kiss, tremendous job at WWE. They're on a heater right now. Absolute mm. heater. Yeah. So Cody Rhodes is a likable dude. Very likable. When I, I I don't watch and I don't follow whatsoever, I just see the images that come across my timeline. He looks and strikes me as a non-likable dude. Yeah, he's very, very likable. He's very, very likable. One of the yeah. they, they call it a white meat baby face, where it's like you're not an anti or anything. You're just a straight good guy, and you kiss the babies, and you you know you hold doors open for everybody. And he's like the first one in a while that's been like cheered like this. Up by the I crowd. watched the uh, I watched the 14 Thor episode of Curb the other night. <laughs> Let's the air out of his tires. That's I, yeah, not a big, not a huge wrestling guy. I respect it. Um, I just never got into it as a kid. So. Yeah, it's one of those things like people don't understand how hard it is. So I hate when people hate on it because they're like, people don't have to like it. But I hate when people are like, oh my god, like it's so stupid. These people are put their bodies on like, and you're just acting. You're essentially doing improv every week. Yeah, it's real. Like you know, there's a lot of work because it's like you know, it's fake. Well, yeah, like so is a lot of stuff that I watch. You know. I respect it. I respect wrestling. <laughs> Look at you two. Are you are you both in a Calcutta right now? Is that what's happening? I <laughs> uh, can't get up. The Xander Shoffley situation here is <laughs> this is you guys <laughs> devoting this amount of time to Xander Shoffley. I don't think golf podcasts should this be talking about him this much. I have an auction that's ongoing here. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you guys. Yeah, how about you sprinkle some on Cantley too? I'm sure he's gonna be there. <laughs> We're 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 do, we're done with the golf. We're, we're done with the golf it. right now. This is this is this is the Jackson Day. This is a holiday. This is Mike, a holiday. Mike Franz asks, "Where do you put Holiday in the lineup for tomorrow?" I see. That's the thing. They don't know who's pitching tomorrow. It, it's that it's the TBD because Pavetta got hurt. Um, I, I start him at second. I think you put him right in there again. You're not dicking around. You're not like <laughs> this you're, is you're not bringing him this up is, to be a part time guy. This is and, absolutely and, disgusting. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was going to say just boot him. Just boot. <laughs> I removed no, I I remove myself. Go ahead. I, 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 minus, 10 there. Points, minus 10 points. Get him Go out ahead, of there. Go ahead, Can I buy a piece, sorry, it, It's showing the Cutter Crawford is starting tomorrow. That's what MLB, uh, the app is saying. So he's what's a righty. His, uh, what's his deal? Righty? Okay. See him in, see in there, Jackson. I would go, I would go um, Gunner, Adley, Santander, Mountcastle, Kowser, Jackson. Westberg, if he's healthy, I guess people were like, maybe, maybe he's hurt. That's why I didn't start today. And then, and then, uh, whoever Mullins and, and fill it in from there. I would so put him in seven, seven, seven or eight starting at second base tomorrow. So I'm into it. I want to see, yeah, I want to see that glove a little bit. Cause we're getting all the offensive highlights. We're getting the bombs out into the, uh, out into the bay there. Let's, let's, you know, let's, let's see some, uh, see some leather action out there tomorrow too. I'm excited about that. Hey guys, how's your, uh, if you want to check in from your Calcutta and give some, uh, yeah, Taylor, more um, out of me tomorrow. are you looking to sell a piece? I'll be, uh, let's talk about that offline. All right. Okay. Let's talk about that offline. Let's talk about that offline. Like, uh, uh, Eric and Jake get annoyed. They're, they know, they're no, not no, involved. listen, no, 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 you guys not involved in this one here. Where would I, where would I put them in the order? Yes. Um, I think, I think what Eric said earlier made a lot of sense. I think you put him in that seven, eight hole somewhere. I think you put the, you know, a Mullins, maybe, maybe you like put some speed at nine to flip the order over, um, and, and have, and have, give him, have him back there to give a little protection to Jackson. Um, that would make sense. I also think that just dials down the pressure, um, that immediately putting him in a position where he feels like he needs to produce at the top of the orders. Um, but look, these guys also know this guy better than we do. Maybe this is a guy that's like, Hey, we're, you know, they bat, we're batting him lead off and in, in, um, in spring training. Like maybe you just stick him right there and you're like Jackson gunner. I don't think this, this will not happen, but I, it would be an awesome statement if it was just Jackson gunner Adley. I mean, that would be just a inject this into my veins like lift, like you want to talk about the lift off? Like Michael Elias should just stick a rocket in the center of the field and just mm. like get my get get um Jake's guy Elon to bring in one of the SpaceX rockets so we can just shoot it up from the center of the field. Hey guys, um, we're gonna put Jackson in the lineup tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, He's like, gonna be that would be a from. statement of intent. I don't think there's any chance that happens. We're all coming to Baltimore in August. Very true, G Man 99. I will be there. 
And you know uh, what's going to happen? I hope you two know what you've done. He's going to put one out to center field that is going to look so, so, so good, and then it's going to get robbed at the last second in honor of Xander Schauffele. It just snacks away from it. Uh, That's what you've done to him. Brian, where would you put him? Skull medalist. Taylor kind of went and, and picked multiple spots. I He went on my spiel about hitting leadoff. I think you empower the kid and say, hey, you are a star. We're going to put you in a star position, lead you off. And then, I mean, the profile fits. He's got the speed. I think that's the part that, um, you know, you listen to scouting reports or you read them and uh, he gets drafted first overall. And then you start seeing the clips come out as he works his way through the minors. And I'm just blown away at the amount of infield hits on ground balls up the middle that he beats out and shit like that. He wreaks havoc on the base pass. I don't know that we have that. I mean, well, the net, that's actually totally false. Gunner just like swiping bags left and right. Um, it's like it's baseball, been a point but of for them this it's year. It's just, just up the chaos, man. Just up it and ta- just pair Gunner and Jackson together and just let them cook. It's just everyone has to be on high alert at all times when these two are on the field, especially when one of them's on the base pass. It's like talk about trying to relieve the pressure on Jackson just because he's a youngster. No, up the pressure on the pitchers, up the pressure on the nine guys out there trying to stop them. Yeah. Let them cook. I'm into it. You guys are you guys are getting me chubbed up here a little bit. And, mm. you know, like I said, I'm trying to manage wow. expectations. I'm trying to be mm. that guy. But and I am wearing sweatpants and it, I don't know. It's just like I'm I oh my you're convincing. Me. I, I'm, you know, lead off. I mean, let's 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 light this rocket. If, if Make it sure to click on not suitable for kids on the ad thing on YouTube after that. Those comments, my goodness. I got well, it. Yeah, right now. I, you know, it's it's like an Al Michaels. It was subtle. I kind of slid it, slipped it in there. Well, <laughs> no, no, um, you know, I subtly made a reference. Let's just put it that way. If if it wasn't a lefty, if it wasn't DL on Friday, I I think they would put him at at um, lead off. Maybe, maybe they still will. I don't know. Maybe who cares. I would love if one time they were just like, fuck it. Let's just do it. Like, let's do, let's do Jackson Gunner Adley. Like just who's, this, just who's the pitcher for uh, Boston tomorrow? What's his name? Cutter Crawford. Little Cutter Crawford. Okay. We'll, we'll, I think we'll he's see a pretty that. big dude. I think he's a big dude. I, I just say that regardless. I know. I know. Little Tony. Dude, Kemp, that made a lot of sense. This guy, he's a monster. <laughs> he plays like 250. <laughs> Great video. Great. Video. How do we feel about that? I laugh at that every time. We, we were talking so about Cutter Dykstra the other day because of Meadow Soprano. Oh, right, 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 right. Big, strong guy. Cutter Black. That's my prediction in you know five years ish. Maybe, maybe sooner. Who could say? Really. Hmm. Does, do we want to have a – obviously, this this night is about Jackson. The next couple of weeks, everywhere else, baseball will a lot of – Yeah, most of the time. Yeah, it's it's been about do that. We, do we – do we want to talk about what this means for the Orioles' other guys at Norfolk that people want up? Do we see – like, who is the next of these guys that we see? Obviously, we've seen Heston in the bigs already. Um, it doesn't feel like Connor Norby continues to have a spot, but man, is it hard to start thinking about Kobe Mayo and when that's going to happen. I mean, yeah. that, that feels like, that feels like one that just will become undeniable at some point over the course of the summer. Um, but man, that dude, that dude is another guy that just continues to rake at every level. So I don't know what you guys, you know, think if they're just sort of fully pressing the red button here and just saying, all right, let's get these guys. Heston, yeah, Heston, with the experience, I kind of like him maybe being the first one. And then, like, it's always good to just have a DH that you can rely on. And then, like, Adley can have full days off where he's not even swinging or anything, and he can really just kind of rest. That would be interesting. But, yeah, you're going to have to pry that bat from Heston's cold, dead hands. Um, Mayo, I mean, that's um, – I'm so excited about him. He's going to be a lot of fun. But, like, I feel like really – I feel like this kind of gives them a little bit of cushion. It gives them a little bit of clock now. The expectations are mm-hmm. – it's it, everything's about Jackson now for the next couple of weeks. And if he does start raking like to your guys predictions, like I feel like the, the pressure is kind of going to be off a little bit. It's going to be a little bit more like, okay, we got this guy here. Now we can let the rest of these guys sort of run their course thoughts on that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that's pretty accurate. And again, it just, I don't know. It just takes one star away from the guys at Norfolk. But again, I mean, they still have a ton of studs down there. Um, again, I mean, there there's probably about 25 other MLB teams who would kill to have one of the Norby Mayo Kerstad like trio. Like teams would go nuts over that. 
Um, but I, I think I, I'm, I'm with Spenny. I know Spenny said all along he thought uh, Kerstad would be the next up. I, I, I'm with him. Um, he's on the 40 man. So again, you don't have to do a corresponding move. Um, like, you know, you don't have to take someone off or DFA someone like you would for, uh, for Mayo, um, or Norby, but I think it's Heston who will come up. I don't know what they're going to do if, you know, but again, I, I just think now that's, we'll cross that bridge when we get there later. And, and if Colton's hitting like this, you know, they probably, they may not need another, uh, outfielder. And if, if Hayes starts to find it and Mullins hit a ball hard today and, you know, they, they may not need, have an issue. They may not have a need at outfield. Um, for a while at least, but like Taylor said, I mean, this is, this is Jackson's time now for the next couple of weeks. Be right. It's Jackson's time. It's, you got to let him glow. You got to let him get the glitter, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just over the moon. That's just to Eric's point. Like this is kind of the last one in the door. Like everyone is right there on the precipice of getting involved, but um, it's just like prospect talk is over with this call up it's go time it's we're beyond liftoff we're in the stratosphere we're in orbit i don't know whatever metaphor you want to use it's time has a fan base ever been this obsessed with their triple a (laughs) team um i'm trying to think think about how much think about how much we've texted about norfolk in our group shot over the past week and a half yeah it's it's a lot i gotta think the astros is crazy and all I see when I scroll my Twitter is no, no, obviously they played amazing, and the guys, and these are guys everybody wants to see. But strong, I just never man. see people with 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 potentially the best team in baseball, it, <laughs> sitting right over here, back this way, playing. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, they're raking in Norfolk! They're raking in Norfolk!" It's like <laughs> it's it's just an amazing. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. I think that will now stop with Jackson up in the bigs. I think Jackson is sort of was the kingpin of people being obsessed with that. But I mean, you know, Eric's tweeting about 429 foot Colby Mayo bombs, and those aren't probably aren't going to stop. I was going to say, Colby, Colby, oh, Colby a fascinating dynamic to me over the over the course of the season. You have a fan base st- that has been starved for a winner, finally has it, one primed, and I w- it was just everyone that's like an Orioles Twitter person is like, here's the Norfolk box score from last night. It's like, <laughs> just amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It, it really is incredible. But yeah, I mean, like it, it's oh, really? and like people talking seriously about like, can they beat a trip in MLB team? You know, I, I think that was, you know, you, you probably got to have your head examined on that. But I mean, these guys are hitting the piss out of the ball like Kobe Mayo every other night. It feels like he's hitting it completely out of the stadium. Heston Kerstad, obviously, we know what he can do. Um, you know, and you mentioned Norby still there. Um it's interesting, man. Uh, these guys are just, they're, they're primed and ready. And this was the, uh, the first shot across the bow, the first domino to fall, so to speak. So very exciting stuff. That's yeah, it. that's it. I don't, I well don't know said. what else there is to say. It's well said. It's here. Okay. Any, uh, any Calcutta updates, any Xander, Xander talk you want to get in here? Um, <laughs> after this has been going on for 90 minutes, uh, no, longer than that, almost two hours. Um, <laughs> Brian Black has gotten involved on Scotty Scheffler. Hasn't been involved. <clears> in <that. laughs> I have not put in a single bid the entire evening, and I until we've gotten to double S here. I've got an I've got an outright ticket on him. Mm. What do you think? Is he going to win by seven, like uh, our guy said, Brandel? He very well might if he just puts decent. If he learns he's how to putt win. decently and he avoids this sensory blitzkrieg that he has out on the range, and I know he's got a young kid on the way and it's very exciting, and if <laughs> Meredith were to go into labor, he'd walk off that 18th green. But let me tell you what, that's my Brandel. Oh, did did Scotty give any quotes about what he would do in that situation? Yeah, he said he he said he'd withdraw. <laughs> That'd be unbelievable. Sam Bird said the same thing. Their kid is due at the same time. Is the the kid is due imminently? I think so. Wow. I mean, can you imagine if he's on eight fairway on Sunday with a three shot lead and he walks off the course? I hope it happens. No, I hope he's one of the most amazing sports moments of all time. I hope he's got an eight shot lead and there's like a bunch of guys like vying for two and then he walks off and it just turns into utter chaos. And like like, you just have one of the green jackets just like march out onto the course and just pick Scotty. It's like the George Bush meme. They like whisper, whisper in his ear and he has to. (laughs) (laughs) maybe it's on the way um so sam wild out here (laughs) that i mean that would be one of the amazing like what if he's at 
What if he's on 15? I hope he and Sam Burns are like he's in a going to win. He's, say he's like just motoring towards a title. Does I hope he, he and Sam Burns are like in a duel and it happens at the same time and they, oh. they both just have to walk off. And then, like, the, Corey the, Connors is, like, puttering and billowing around behind them, like, eight shots back, and he just marches to victory. That would be, <laughs> I mean, it would be an amazing moment. I mean, that's the backdoor Rory win. That's yeah. how Rory's going to win. That's how Rory's going to win. Rory's going to be seven shots back on Sunday of Scotty and Sam Burns dueling. They're both going to have their kids, and he's going to just hole out from, from the 18 greenside bunker like a few years ago. I've been um, avoiding I've been avoiding the Rory optimism, but now you've given me a very very plausible scenario. I mean, that would be the that. God. That would be incredible. The uh, Twitter golf Twitter would truly never recover from. I think uh, they would have to they would have to like you know how they do like the patches on the the uh, the green jacket. They would have to patch an asterisk on there. What do we think about this question? I don't get it. Hmm. 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 Do we think he's more cool, cute, or funny? I think he's he's phrasing it all as one. So oh. if it's a yes or no proposition, yes, I mean, no, you can't have it all. It's definitely no. Because I mean, we admit he's. I mean, he's the guy's cute as hell. And we have to admit it. Yeah, and listen, I think he's very funny. Yeah. Cool. cool. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, take that or leave it. You know, cool. Oh, this isn't it. No, you are not. You are not anonymous. Larry David is not anonymous. Okay. Was Thank that all we got? Thank you, Spenny. That's all I got. Exciting day. Exciting day. If anybody, I, That's what all I'll say. Amazing. I, also, the first time I think in the history of our collective group chat that I've ever sent a piece of news in first. I was stunned when I went to it. I know when it sent the <laughs> – I sent a passing tweet like 51 seconds after it went out. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to break this to these guys. And shout out to the uh, shout out to the X app for, uh, as Eric and I talked about, uh, not opening into the app anymore from text messages. It goes to the uh, the Safari. So I had to go, I had to manually log out of our text messages, and then that's I had to really? – I had to go to the X app myself and uh, look up Jeff Passon and make sure I wasn't getting uh, wasn't getting ball sacked. I didn't. Does it really do that? It does for me. I think oh, it does yeah. for Eric too. Oh really? It has not done yeah. that for me, but I hope that weird that. on the phone. Fun stuff. Hey guys, I'm gonna come in here and make this app a lot better and more functional. <laughs> free speech, free speech, free speech, free speech. We're gonna get rid of the bots next. What do you think about that? It hasn't done it at all. No, it's, it's by the way, Jake. We still need that video for. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, the video we oh, talked about. Don't worry. Imagine if he hits the home run. I'm telling you, it's. Well, I hope they don't go that long without a home run. Well, he's too young to drink too. Oh well, so. no, I, I was thinking Friday. Yeah, yeah. If he hits one tomorrow, and they break it out, that would be. Yeah, the vibe will be yeah. fully, fully back. I mean, Any, anyone who's a, a fan of the uh, the the dong bong as it as it's known, uh, let's let's hashtag watch this space at Jake Luke on X. Mm. I mean, people should always be watching Jake Luke on X, of course, and at X of Fifty Two Podcast, of course, it'll be on there. One hundred percent. Yep. It's also so funny that the guy named Cutter is is started. He's starting tomorrow when there's going to be a lineup of Jackson, Gunner, Adley, Colton. Ryan and all the other frat names. This is going to be this like really a. Is, like, this is going to uh, be a frat bro fight and like tequila cowboy down in Key West. Like it's just, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm. I just. How many? How many do you know who my dad is? Like how many of those are going to be tossed around this whole weekend? Yeah. No, but yeah, he's just. He's just. He's. He's just right straight out of the lab, right off the operating table. He's the next Frankenstein monster, and Michael Elias is. Uh, you know you know, frolicking troop of frat boys coming in and mashing the ball and, you know, just flashing the leather. Friday is 50% chance of rain with, with nothing higher than 15 after, uh, uh, 11 AM. Oh, I mean, all, this is going to be a, this is going to be a bird bath type atmosphere game. I'm into it. I have a, I have a, uh, employee going away party in college park. So I'll reporting live from Looney's college mm. park situation. I'll give you guys the I'll give you guys the scenes down there. Yeah, let, let, yeah. that sounds like it's going to be an absolute scene down there. Hopefully, is that a recurring, a recurring appointment, appointment on the calendar? Huh? Is that a recurring appointment on the calendar? The old yes. going away party at Looney's. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Listen, social media—it's a tough business. People are moving around a lot. Mm. Athletics in general. Yeah, Athletics true. in general. 
Yeah. And God won't won't people that work in sports let you know it on Twitter. Everyone's always going to complain. So on, hey, on X, please. You're the one who works on X. X. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. That's true. On X. On the platform known as X, where you can follow Jake Luke at L O U Q U E. Nailed it. Thank you. Nailed it. All right. Never forget early on this show's history when I said Jake's last name is pronounced Luke A. Luke Hugh. I think I mean, it, it, probably, it. it probably should uh-huh. be. But that's what this is what I get for Americanizing it. Yeah, that's all right. Who could say? All right. Is that all we got? Hour on Jackson Holiday. Let's go. Let's ride. Mm. Love Do it. it, boys. All right. Let's light this rocket. Let's send it up, Michael Elias. Thank you. Thank you for uh, all you've done and all you continue to do. And we will continue to praise you. Um, it's much appreciated. Jackson Holiday. Have you heard the good news? He has risen. Thank you all for hanging out with us here on this live, this impromptu live stream. Really threw one together. I did an hour and a half podcast on the Ravens and the Liars luncheon earlier, which seems uh, pretty inconsequential right now. Let's just say that. But that will be dropping in the morning. The jumbo set on all our feeds. So you can check that out. Uh, you can all uh, check this out. Um, by subscribing to us on YouTube, by following us on social media, at Exit 52 Podcast across the board on X, on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, you can find me at Jake Luke, L-O-U-Q-U-E, like Taylor said. You can find Brian at Barstool Banks. If I Taylor at Taylor Smythe 10, Eric is at E-D-I-T-T-I 22. We thank you all as always, and we'll talk to you again very soon. Maybe with a series recap, maybe they'll call up Heston Kerstow tomorrow. Maybe they'll call up Kobe Mayo. Who knows? We're just living in a fantasy land here, but great week for sports with uh, the Masters. You got plenty of Masters content tonight for anyone who wanted it. I'm sure it was many of you. Great stuff. A lot of good betting content. Be sure to uh, hit up at Barstool Banks on X for all your uh, favorite Masters picks, too, preferably in the DMs. Mm. Get in there. Just talk nitty-gritty golf with him. He loves that stuff. If, I will also give out his number if you Venmo me $1. So wow. Yeah. You don't even have to Venmo me. I'll just do it gratis because this guy, there's nothing <laughs> more than he loves just talking talking some golf. Maybe talk a little baseball to him. If you're a former player, get yeah. in there. Talk to him about the, the yeah. Just, what, what it was like to be on the field live. Those, mm. Yeah, those days out on the diamond, just you know, mm. crushing you know crushing gatorade and what you know sunflower seeds things of that <laughs> packing fat lips fat heaters packing upper deckers uh actually too uh mm-hmm. out there at uh you know the corner you know so maybe an amen corner even um thank you all for tuning in yet again and like i said we will talk to you very soon